Do you find cheap casings exceedingly difficult to work with while making sausage? If you do, you've come to the right place because in today's video, I'm gonna share with you four tips on how to improve your experience with these very tiny, somewhat fragile casings. Welcome everyone, my name is Eric with Two Guys in a Cooler, and you know what, let's just jump right into it. Small diameter casings, like sheep casings, are great when making things like hot dogs and snack steaks or your small diameter sausage. Matter of fact, I prefer these natural casings over the synthetic casings like collagen. I tend to find sheep casings deliver a nice snappy bite. They firm up and crisp up really well. Overall, they're a joy to work with when handled properly. But when they're not handled properly, they can be a pain in the you know what. And so today, you're gonna see exactly what I do every time I work with sheep casings and I'm going to break it down into four simple tips to hopefully improve your sheep casing experience. Starting with tip number one, you got to source quality casings. And I know this sounds obvious, but you'd be surprised how many people want to go cheap on casings. Casings are already not very cheap, but you want to spend that extra buck or two to get those high quality casings. You're going to end up throwing out a lot less casing, you're gonna have a whole lot less frustration, and you're gonna end up with a much better sausage. When you source casings, look for quality A or double A grade. This means that there are very few imperfections, very few puncture holes, if any, and they are rated for emulsified sausage, which is gonna have a whole lot higher of a pressure. Another thing you need to know about high quality casings is that they have a tendency to last longer in the refrigerator. A good quality casing stored in the fridge has almost an indefinite shelf life, but poor quality casings after about nine months to 12 months will start to develop an odor. They will become super brittle. They'll tear very easy. When you try to stuff them, it is incredibly frustrating because they break so often and it's just a mess. You usually end up having to throw all that away. So just to give you an example, the casings that we're gonna be using in this video, the sheep casings, I got over two and a half years ago. They've been in my fridge uh, ever since and you'll get to see how they Perform. So where do you get grade A casings? Well, I guess it depends on really where you live. You'll have to ask around. We buy ours from the sausage maker. We've been buying our casings there exclusively for the last 10 years or so, and we've never had a problem. They don't source their casings from China like a lot of other companies do. They get theirs from Canada, North America, or in the case of sheep casings, they get it from New Zealand. There's no bleaches, it's all natural, they've been de-whiskered, and they are absolutely the best I've ever used. You might pay a little bit more for them, but trust me when I tell you they are well worth it. I'll put a link in the description box so that you can see uh, some more information for yourself. So tip number one, get super good casings. Let's go ahead and open up the casings I have right here in front of me and uh, get into tip number two. These are the sheep casings that we're using, 22, 24 millimeter, two and a half years old in the fridge. Today we're making pepperoni snack sticks for Celebrate Sausage. Now at the sausage maker, you can get everything from 18 millimeter all the way up to, I wanna say 28 millimeter or something like that. A lot of different options. All right, so let's go ahead and open up this pack so that you can see how it comes. These are salt packed rather than brine packed, which simply means that they've been coated in salt and preserved. And as you can see, you get a lot of casings in this little container. All right, let's get into tip number two. And tip number two is all about, you know, removing that singular casing from that bundle. That could be very frustrating experience. You know, you get these things all knotted up and they're, you end up breaking them and things like that. So tip number two is be patient and gentle with your casings. Let me show you what I do. I take that entire bundle out of the bag. I make sure that there's no knot. Often the casing is tied in a knot. So you just untie that knot and I straighten everything out just like you see right in front of me. What we want to do is create basically like a path of least resistance for the casing. So once I have everything in front of me, I'm just going to find one singular strand of casing. And for this little bit, I'm not going to edit anything out. So this is happening in real time. I am going to just very gently pull that singular strand from one side of the casing until it comes loose, just like so. There we go. All right. And if you are patient and gentle, you should be able to do this without knotting up your entire bundle. So now that I've got that casing loose from one side, I'm going to start to pull it from the other side. And here we go. Now, once again, I'm not going to edit this uh, so that you could see exactly what it looks like when I do it. And matter of fact, I'll do it a couple of times for you. But as I continue to pull, there it is. We now have our casing separated. And it's just as easy as that. Matter of fact, I'm going to do another one so that you can see what that looks like. And there we go. Do we straighten it back out? And let's go ahead and get the other side nice and gentle, straightening back out the other side. And then I'll continue to pull. And there we go. 
We now have our second casing out. And so the trick here is to try to keep your bundle of casings relatively linear. You know, it just makes everything happen a lot easier. If you notice it bunch up too much, just pull it back to where it's elongated a little bit. And here's a third one. Just check that out. They come out with absolutely no problem. All right. So for the sake of brevity, I am going to fast forward this a minute, but we did a total of nine casings using this technique and we did not have a single problem. Just make sure your bundle isn't bunched up. You'll see me continually elongating it as it gets a little bunchy right there. And there we have it. We've got nine casings separated from the bunch. And it's now time to move on to the next step and the next tip. You got to stretch these babies out. So let's move over to the sink so you can see what I'm talking about. What we've got here is a bowl, some cool water, and just one strain of casing. Do one at a time. It's a whole lot easier. We're going to put the casing in that cool water, and this is going to help soften it up. It's going to remove the salt from the exterior, and it's going to make it a little bit easier to work with here in a second. Be careful to not mix the casing around in the water too much, because that could cause it to have knots, and knots at this stage, for sheep casings at least, are a little difficult to get rid of. So let's go ahead and find the very end of that casing. And what we want to do here is open it up wide enough so that we can put some running water inside that casing. And so that's what we're doing right here. Be patient and gentle. That's the theme of working with sheep casings. And there we go. We've got ourselves our little opening. Once you've opened up your casing, stick it under some running water. We want to fill it up like a balloon. This is not only going to flush out the casing, but it's also going to stretch out the casing, which is what we're trying to do. And that is tip number three. Stretch out your casing. Look at that. Now, you don't have to fill it up entirely. Uh, once you have a sufficient amount of water in there, you can go ahead and move on to removing that water. And how we're going to do that is just pinching the casing where we're holding it and then just pulling that casing through that pinch. And that's just going to remove any excess water inside the casing. When we let our casing soak, we don't want water in them as the stretching part has already happened. So once we get all that water removed, this is what your casing should look like. And it's now time for the next tip, which is making your casing slippery. When your casing is super slippery, it is very easy to work with. So take a cup of cool water. It doesn't have to be a lot. And grab a half a teaspoon of baking soda. Usually I put about a half a teaspoon for every two cups of water. This is going to alkalinize the water. And when you have an alkalinized water, it's going to create a very slippery surface for your casing. It's not going to do anything for the tenderness, but it's going to do everything for the easeability of use. The benefits of using baking soda in your water while your casing soaks are incredible. You reduce casing blowout. If you happen to get a knot, removing the knot is incredibly easy. And all we got to do is place that casing that has been recently stretched out and rinsed out in that alkalinized water. And there you have it. And that is tip number four. Add a little baking soda to your water to make your casing super slippery. I am going to prepare the rest of our casings, and then we're going to finish this video off with a bonus tip. Our casings are now ready. They're all going to go into alkalinized water, and it's now time for our bonus tip. Let your casing soak. Don't rush this step. Minimum three hours. I would actually recommend soaking overnight in the refrigerator. You're going to get the absolute best results. So if you can, soak overnight. So now we're done with the initial preparation of our casings. It's now the next day, and I'm about to stuff these pepperoni snack sticks. They've been soaking in that alkalinized water for about 12 hours. And all I'm going to do is just grab one. Now, because it's so slippery, you can kind of feel the casing. You can kind of feel the water. It's going to make pulling this casing out very easy. Now we have all nine in that one cup, and we're just going to grab one of those casings. Once again, we're going to look for the very end of it. And because it's been stretched out, softened up, tenderized, uh, it's going to make it very easy to open that casing up. And that's what we just did. We're going to dip the opened end of that casing into the water just to fill it with a little bit of water. That's going to actually lubricate it while we put it on the stuffing horn. Now, when it comes to the stuffing horn, just wet your fingers a little bit without alkalinized water. 
and wet the stuffing horn. That's going to help you slide your casing on very easy, just like so. That little water that we added when we dipped our casing creates a nice thin layer of alkalinized water between the casing and the stuffing horn, which allows it to go on super easy. And check it out. We've got a little knot there, but no worries. Watch how easy this is to undo. So simple. There it is. Amazing. One question we get from time to time is, should you rinse the alkalinized solution off of your casing? I would say no, leave it on. It's that alkalinized solution that's helping everything stay so slippery. And there's really not enough of it on the casing to affect the flavor whatsoever. You'll never even notice it. And so let's go ahead and put a second casing on that horn. And you'll know that everything is moving in the right direction when your casing looks like this on the horn. You should be able to slide it effortlessly back and forth. All right, let me show you what it looks like while we stuff them. I'm actually testing out a new economical electric stuffer. I've got a review video coming out. I'm going to put a link in the description box below if you want to uh, check it out for yourself. But we were able to stuff, I don't know, about seven pounds of these pepperoni snack sticks in just a few minutes with this electric stuffer. Absolutely brilliant. And there it is. That's what it looks like. We had zero casing blowout. And if you follow all of these tips, you're going to have the same success. All right, folks, there you have it. That's all I got for you today. I hope today's quick little video steers you in the right direction so that you can have a more positive experience working with sheep casings. If you have any questions about the topic of today's video, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you like this video or got something out of it, a great big thumbs up is always helpful. If you are new here, here and you like sausages or meat preservation or you want to learn how to make sausages, smash that subscribe button and that notification bell because in two months, October 1st, 2023, we're premiering season four of our sausage making marathon called Celebrate Sausage. It is a daily upload through the entire month of October. I don't want you to miss a single episode. Thanks a lot for being here. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.